Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Plasma 6.4 here on my Arch Linux install. I did update it this morning to the new KDE Plasma. Some of the features that I do like, even though I may not use them a lot, is the uh, tiling feature. If I hit shift, I can shift my terminal there and hold shift here. I can shift this one here and then you can resize them. I could put a third one there. Uh, the tiling is something though that I will probably only use uh, for running like Scribus and only Office next to each other on the same window, on the same monitor. Specifically for when I'm doing book layout stuff or design work possibly. The other thing I do like is spectacle. If I go down, let's see, let me uh, just uh, bring this up. This is something I don't understand is it once you tile something, it, it maintains that size even when you open it again. Do need to look into how to undo that. If I do this with the print screen with the new spectacle, I can highlight this area, but something you can do is hold shift and it will pinpoint where you're at and you can fine tune your screenshot to only be on that one specific thing. Let me redo that here. There's that. It looks pretty good. But you can also do freehand stuff inside the screenshot. You can highlight text like the Plasma KDE 6.4. You can just draw straight lines. Or you can do stuff like drawing an arrow to the thing you want people to focus on. You do have these shapes also, which is literally just drawing a shape on the screen. You can change the color, the fill, shadow. Stuff I do like though is being able to use this to pixelate areas or just blur something out. You can also type in text. I have just the default. I had to set it to white since I'm on the dark theme, but you can type a screenshot. You can add numbers on the screen also. Then I can do a save as, let it go into the screenshot, save. It saves literally the screenshot that I just did. That is something I do actually believe I'm going to use actually. And this K runner gets color. Enter a color code in any notation and let KRunner show you what it looks like. Okay, this is something for some reason it's not working for me. I'm probably missing something. So here, if I do this, if I do F59 or no, 53, let's see, you know what? F, F5, F0, F4. You know, it's not giving me the color. Now there is the settings, plugins, configure, enabled search plugins. So you have all of these search plugins. I'm assuming I'm missing something, but I do know that it does support it. You know, it does give you this. I can just full screen this really quick. The video quality isn't great, but you see it's giving them the color for that, or you can run it through the calculator. I will be looking into figuring out why it's missing that functionality, but honestly with KRunner, I really don't really use it. The layout stuff with window management, you can have different tiling layouts on your different desktops. So I'm assuming this will also work on two different monitors. You have more accessibility, you know, for the keyboard navigation, the screen reader, you know, in the design, uh, when I rebooted my computer, I did notice this, that the uh, <laughs> dark theme was just a slight bit darker, you know, in this stuff, you know, it's, you know, the energy page and the info center and entirety of the K menu. Edit presentation and grouping of the launcher have all had their looks overhauled to make them cleaner, clearer, and easier to use. Now, KDE does look like let's see this open info center does not have it installed because i don't have everything installed i installed a very light version of plasma actually when i installed it so you know it's very 
very, very light that I put in here. Let's see. I can do system monitor, bring that up. You know, I do like how it looks. I know you can change how this looks, but to me, is it a little easier to read? Just a little bit. You know, the contrast difference is definitely there with the darker theme. The stuff that got me, the widgets, you know, I, I really only use a few widgets like my CPU, GPU temperatures. You know, with the disks and devices, you now it'll give you the option to fix a drive if there's errors in it. This is the big thing, though, is the uh, tablet configuration. Let's open this for the drawing tablet. I do have a Wacom tablet. So with this, you know, it's follow current screen. I'm going to go ahead and just have it follow specifically only this screen so the mouse pointer doesn't go off of it. Something they did do, though, is give you the ability to continue using the tablet when not in a drawing application like Krita. It'll just act as a mouse, you know, so that is pretty cool. The pen, I do like that I can uh, change specifics on the pen itself, you know, and then you have the eraser that I do have. You have the pressure range, and this one states that I have to manually calibrate this tablet. So this is something that's, you know, fairly easy to do. I honestly just adjust this curve when I need to, but sometimes I adjust it in the application. The pad itself, it has all the buttons here. I wish it had a display of the tablet, similar to how GNOME does. But I do have the uh, Wacom Intuos Pro small. So it it is a good tablet. You know, it's wirelessly, you know, I plugged in the USB adapter and everything like that. Right now I do have it charging its battery though. Not the easiest to use the tablet here. With this stuff I do like is on here is I can see my Wacom tablet's charging rate with it plugged in. So this is pretty good. That I do like and it even does see it, the battery use, the battery when it's connected over the Wi-Fi, it will see it. That is some of the stuff that I do like, but this is the biggest thing for me right here is the color management. For those looking to adjust colors for gaming or watching movies, the display and monitor page in system settings comes with a brand new HDR calibration wizard in Plasma 6.4. It does have extended dynamic range mode, which is just a different HDR. On screens that support it. Now my two monitors right now do not support HDR, but they are 10-bit displays. So, and I will show why that matters here in a second. And this here, finally, Plasma now supports P010 color, video color format, improving power efficiency with HDR video content. In a nutshell, Plasma helps you make the best use of your fancy screen. Okay, I'm going to show that here in a second. Obviously, this other stuff we've already seen. So, you know, obviously you do have this stuff for the sensors page now. You can look at your temps and everything. Let me close this, though. I'm going to right-click Display Configuration. I've always had this color accuracy. Like right now, I have it set to Prefer Efficiency, but I can set it to Prefer Color Accuracy. Visually, you I don't see a difference, but I would turn that on if I was like actively doing like photography a lot. The RGB range with automatic, it's actually defaulting the full on my display. So I just leave it on automatic. The big thing that this limit color resolution to automatic 10 bits per color. Okay. Before my monitor, I believe, was running in 8-bit because when I rebooted and it showed me this 10-bit, the color saturation of my monitor was a lot more, not a huge amount more vibrant, but something I did notice with this on here before the transition between color gradients of like dark to bright you could see the individual stepping in the transition. So that's one reason I know the display was operating in 8-bit mode. But with this now, I know YouTube isn't going to 
represent it very good because OBS is capturing an 8-bit color file, but the color gradation between the dark and the lights is extremely smooth on the monitor now, so I do know it is running in 10-bit mode. So that is something that is really, really good for me since I do color grading in OBS Studio when I record video with my Lumix S5 II and I shoot in 10-bit 422 color. So it produces a V-log file, so it's really flat color and you have to color grade it or apply a color transformation to it, which could be either a LUT, but I also just uh, use the built-in stuff in DaVinci Resolve because it has all the required things specifically for Panasonic's V-Gamut and V-Log, and then I shift it from that into either Rec. 709 or Rec. 2020 if you're going to do HDR. But this, I think, is going to come in very, very handy for me because now I'm actually seeing, now I'm actually getting 10-bit color on my display. And this is with an AMD GPU, but that's one of the biggest features I do fill with KDE Plasma is Plasma very much is ahead of pretty much all the other desktops. I mean, GNOME is starting to get HDR functionality. You still cannot apply an ICC color profile to the display when it's running in Wayland. That's one of the main reasons I switched to KDE Plasma when I purchased an AMD card, decided to leave NVIDIA, is one... At the time, Wayland was broken on NVIDIA cards. It worked, but it also had issues. But I wanted to be able to still calibrate and profile my display with DisplayCal. Later today, I figure after about an hour or two of these displays being on, I'm going to recalibrate them using DisplayCal and see if my percentages on my sRGB and Adobe RGB go up because I do believe for sure it is definitely displaying 10-bit color now. So it looks good to me. Let me know, are you excited for the changes that KDE Plasma is adding that is definitely for artists and content creators uh, in terms of all the color accuracy stuff that they are adding because you do need color management for HDR. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.